This is VSX from Steven Slade Audio. And this is a multi-platinum mixer who mixes almost exclusively on headphones. In this video, I'm gonna share a handful of tips for mixing on headphones while taking a look at one of the hottest pieces of gear to hit the audio world since Les Paul and Ampex brought multi-track recording to the market in the 1950s. But before we dive in, I wanna give you the ultimate guide to mixing on headphones completely free. Inside of this 18-page guide, I'm gonna help you take average and even poor recordings and turn them into radio-ready releases all while using headphones as your main monitoring source. We'll look at several of the drawbacks of mixing on cans and show you the techniques you need to effectively mix and master music using headphones. You can grab your copy completely free with the link in the description below. I've mixed almost exclusively on headphones for going on seven or eight years now, and my go-to cans since I can remember have been the Sennheiser HD 650s. I love my 650s, but here are a few drawbacks that have me excited to check out VSX. Number one, they're open back cans, and they're not as good in loud environments. If I'm on a plane or traveling with my family, it's just not possible to mix with all the noise. Number two, they're only one source, which is something that often causes me to reminisce working in my professionally treated studios, or it's a click of a button to sample between multiple sets of studio monitors. Third, the low end is not that great, which means I have to make sure I have a sub pack nearby or risk spending hours going back and forth to my car to check mixes against reference tracks. Today, we'll see if VSX can dethrone my 650s and become my new go-to headphones for mixing and mastering. What is VSX? VSX is one part headphones designed as closed back with beryllium drivers. They include Slate's patent pending technology called Acoustic Ported Subsonics or APS, which they say delivers an unrivaled low end by harnessing the air pressure to supercharge low frequencies. The other component of VSX is the software, which they say when combined with the headphones creates a brutally honest virtual studio monitoring solution. All right, straight from the horse's mouth on their website, they say the easy to use VSX plugin uses our binaural perception modeling BPM algorithms to precisely reproduce 3D rooms and speakers. You'll feel as if you're mixing on real professional speakers in real rooms. We'll check that out here in a minute. With the level match bypass feature, you can compare your mix at the same level along with VSX HD linear emulation, which flattens the bypass signal. Let's look at a couple of the problems VSX attempts to solve. First up, music makers working in untreated rooms. To me, the first and most obvious problem VSX aims to solve is the onslaught of music makers attempting to produce, mix, and even master with studio monitors in poorly treated or even completely untreated rooms. The cost to design, build, and treat an acoustically sound control room can be a daunting task, especially when you're trying to turn a bedroom, a space that's not at all designed to be a studio, into a studio. With VSX, you get access to some of the world's most prestigious control rooms designed for mixing and mastering and not sleeping although it never hurts to have a comfortable couch in your studio. Number two, it provides a flat response to help you make accurate decisions that will translate across multiple playback systems. If you already mix on headphones, then you'll know that there just aren't any truly flat headphones on the market. There are certainly some that claim to be flat, but when independent tests are conducted, they reveal the truth, which to my knowledge has never found these claims to be very accurate. Which is why Sonarworks, a company I've used and trusted for over seven years, has been so successful at helping most headphone brands to achieve a more flat response with their calibration plugin, Reference. But according to Steven Slate Audio, you don't need calibration software like Sonarworks with their headphones, as the calibration is unnecessary due to their patent pending design and the use of the VSX software. So after spending a few weeks listening through VSX, I'm really impressed. First off, I really enjoyed the sound of the cans themselves, even without the software. They've been my go-to at night laying in bed. I've had them in my backpack for working out of coffee shops, and then of course while traveling across the US and back. One way I like to test the low end of headphones is to compare the sub frequency response to what I get with my sub pack using my low end trick. Here's a quick look at one of the best mixing techniques I believe that you can do when mixing in general, but especially on headphones. I'm gonna move pretty quick, but I'll link above where I go more in depth with this technique if you wanna get the full experience. All right, so we're here in Pro Tools. We're gonna take a listen to the song and I'm gonna show off the low end trick, really the referencing trick. It's so much more than just your low end. I wanna give a shout out to the band Almost Blonde. Huge shout out for letting me share the track before it's even released. The song is called Ready or Not. Let's take a listen. Not, 
Right on. So we got a rocking track. We needed a larger than life mix. And the way that I got this was my referencing trick. So we're going to come over here and I've got Infinity EQ on the stereo bus post referencing plugin. That's important. If you use a referencing plugin, you want to make sure this is after that so that anything you do to your mix, it's also going to happen to your reference. So first off, level match. You want to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Make sure your mix, wherever it's at, and your reference track are comparable. And the way that I accomplish this, I actually mix through loudness processing when I mix. I get it hit, hitting pretty hard. And so I've got some parallel compression. I've got some clipping into limiting happening to make sure that I can compare accurately at the very least while you're referencing. You don't have to leave it there, but I typically do. I mix through the loudness processing. Then I'm going to come over here. We got infinity EQ and we're just going to put a high cut filter, a low pass, only the low winds getting through. And I'm going to go all the way down to 20 Hertz, 20, 25, 30 Hertz. Almost nothing should be happening down in there, but I'm going to take a listen to my track. Then I'm going to take a listen to a reference track for uh, licensing reasons. I can't play the, the reference in this particular video, but you get the point. I'm going to hit play and we're going to take a listen. Now, one thing to note with VSX, I do like to, and you won't hear this in your, you got a clean output for the tutorial. I like to go to a far field or something with some, some nice bottom end. We'll go to NRG's far field for this example. And now I'll hear that. And we're just 25, 30, and I'm going to slowly open this up. And I want to feel, do I, do I feel the kick punching? Do I feel the low end rumbling sustaining from the bass guitar or the synth bass, 808, whatever it is. I'm listening for those details as I open up this low pass filter. It's starting to get a lot more kick punching. Got a kick going, got the bass a little bit resonating. Now we're really getting in that 40, 50 hertz with the fundamental of this kick drum. So this would be where I'll click over and I'll hear what's my reference doing. If the kick is punching so much more than mine, then I know I've got some work to do. And I'll actually mix. I'll go to my kick drum and boost up 40, 50 hertz as I'm using the low end trick, the referencing trick here, and just kind of make some adjustments. Let's listen a little bit further. Open it up a bit. Right on. And that's when I'm going to click over. I'm going to listen to the reference track. Now it's going to depend. Is your reference track fundamental in the kick drum, 70 hertz, 100 hertz? Is it deep down in the 40, 50, 60 hertz? That's going to matter. So choosing good references is certainly going to be part of that. I'll link above to a video where I go way more in depth with this tutorial for you to see the get the full experience even so that you can see really what I'm doing there. But uh, in short, once I get the low end working, remember it's the referencing trick now, not just the low end trick. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set a high pass filter. So getting rid of the bottom end, hundred Hertz or so, I don't need it. Once I got my low end working pretty good, we're going to get that out of the way and I'm going to listen for the low mids. Again, flipping back and forth between those references and making sure that you've got them at least in the ballpark level matched. And you may find that your vocal has got way too much energy or it's not compressed enough in the mid range. You may find that your sibilance, once you get up here, I'll kind of high pass to 1K or so and I'll listen for that upper mid, the top end. That's a little bit crazy. We got pretty aggressive guitars and I've got the headphones cranked, but I'm gonna listen to my track and maybe a similar track that's got some aggressive guitars. What's going on in that upper mid range? I think you get the point, the referencing trick. Definitely check out the link in the description for the mixing on headphones guide and then I'll link above where you can see this full technique in action, level matching and all. And thanks for checking it out. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Pretty good. I I've got my favorites for sure. So uh, messing around with Archon Studio, I think the midfields are my go-to, number one. Second up, I've got, uh, you gotta have a pair of NS10s. So I got the NRG NS10s. Over here, uh, Steven Slate's Barefoots. I'm pretty sure there's his Barefoots there. Uh, his midfield's more powerful, got the low end thing happening. I really dig that. I actually like his uh, little mix cube. Um, and then number five, I've got the boom box. Like, come on. Got to have a boom box. I've got the Bluetooth speaker here, but a click of a button in the box and we're rocking and then we're right back to our main monitoring. So 
Digging it. We'll see which one sticks, which one uh, maybe bumps the Archon, but as of right now, those are my top five. VSX certainly passes the test for giving me what I need to deliver an accurate low end. Let's quickly address the elephant in the room. Early models of VSX featured a plastic band that gave some customers issues with the headband snapping. Now I have a pretty small head and I haven't experienced any issues personally, but I did survey my email list and found a fair amount of customers did have issues with them breaking. However, the overwhelming majority reported that Slate and his team took great care of them and issued replacements at no additional cost. That being said, in speaking with Josh from Steven Slate Audio, the latest models have replaced that plastic band with a metal band and they now say this has become a non-issue moving forward. That's great to hear considering the price for VSX will set you back around $500 US. Speaking of price, let's talk about that for a second. With VSX, you're really getting a major two for one in that you're getting a pair of great sounding headphones that work not just for mixing and mastering, but they're closed back, so they're a solid option for recording as well. But you're also getting access to dozens of studio monitors and the experience of sitting in some pretty incredible control rooms. You would have to spend thousands on room treatment and high-end monitors just to equal what you'd be getting from this $500 investment. So after spending the last several months with VSX, the question remains, will I be replacing my Sennheiser HD 650s with VSX as my main headphones? Well, it's complicated. I've mixed hundreds of records and well over a thousand songs using my 650s, and I trust what I've been able to deliver using them over the last seven or eight years. But VSX is different, and it provides something my 650s just can't emulate. So in a way, I'm cheating by saying yes and no. But similar to how you would switch between multiple sets of monitors in a professional studio, I will be switching between my 650s and VSX. And from the handful of mixes I've delivered using this setup, I'm a better mixer for having VSX in my tool set. If you have any questions about VSX or mixing on headphones in general, I'd love to answer them down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to grab your free copy of my mixing on headphones guide, where I'm gonna show you the exact techniques that I use on a daily basis when mixing with headphones. And if you wanna see my exact vocal mixing chain, I suggest you check out this video over here, where I'm gonna show you exactly how I mix vocals. I'll see you over there.